little box jumps up, click the word got it, clears out of the way. And then uh, have your, take a seat. Sitting at the front edge, front edge of the chair, hands on the thighs, finding that central pillar, that line down the middle, and then working to feel this sort of soft quality, loose in the shoulders, loose in the neck. <clears throat> so this sort of interesting concept, dynamic separation. So when we're, uh, we, we feel our bodies in the state that they're in now, and there are places, if not, you know, the majority of the body that's sort of held together, clenched together, stuck together. And the process of our joint and uh, joint mobilization movements, and then eventually the, the sort of standing Tai Chi is to separate all the parts rather than have them be stuck together. And so, you know, as we get older, the body tends to get sort of stuck and then we get this sort of limited range. So this feeling of separating, of opening, of releasing uh, and finding the spaces between and throughout. <clears throat> so right away, having that idea Closing the eyes, you've got your central pillar, which gives you the integrity, the structural integrity, and then everything else can be let go of, relaxed, soft. Let the breathing assist you in that. Take a nice big full inhale and, and then feel the expansion. And then a nice smooth exhale. That's softening and releasing. I'm going to do this a few more times. three or four more breaths from the master commander center in the mind being able to send a message out through the nervous system to soften to relax and release there's a certain layer of this relaxing and softening that is just Choice is just remembering that it's a thing to relax and telling the body to do it. But then another layer of it is we've got like residue buildup or we've got just places that we're not even, we can't sense quite yet that we're tense there. So that's where the movements come in handy. Slide the hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, chest up, chin up. By making this shape, we encounter some places that we're holding. And then we go in the other direction, sliding the hands forward, hollow the chest, drop the head around. Do this three, four more times. And come back to the neutral position. Again, that dynamic, loose, soft, relaxed quality and rotation. 
Turning, left hand forward, right hand back, turn the shoulders, turn the head. And then switch. And just go at your own pace. Feel free to linger where the body should linger. <laughs> And that Taoist view of a healthy body is one that is a changeable, transformable, move, uh, able to move through its ranges of motion without impediment. And so our practice is to move the body through those ranges and encounter the impediments and round by round, polish them out, loosen them up, clear them through. <clears throat> and then back to neutral. That's that rotational plane. We hang the arms and lateral plane. Sideways, leaning, lift your left wrist up, reach your right hand down. You can even lift the foot off and then Switch. One more each way. And we're back to neutral. Shoulder blades. Again, that dynamic separation that we want to produce here. Shoulder blades come forward. Feel how that's stretching open the space between your spine and your shoulder blades along your back. And then lift up, and then as you go back, you're opening and separating the space here, and then down. By closing in front, you're opening the back, lifting. By closing, shoulder blades back towards each other, opening in front. And each round, that emphasis on melting, sung, softening, so that we don't get stuck sort of grabbing the body and then moving it through a, a, a range. We're remembering that there's the doing and then the releasing into softness. <clears throat> and reverse, backing up. Separating parts that should be separated. Finding space in between places where there should be space, but often there isn't for people. Often things are stuck, glued, sort of like collagen knitted together. So we have to sort of break it up. That's those little pops and little sounds that you hear is, is the little glued areas sort of loosening. And round by round, we're sort of getting a lubricant through all these spaces. And then pause for a moment and we go right shoulder forward and up. And then as it goes back and down, the left shoulder goes forward and up. And we just roll. Roll four. <clears throat> Neutral. Fold at the elbows and flare out and up and down. 
around in front, touch the elbow. Inhale as you open these chambers. One more. And then elbows back. Down, forward, up. All the way up. Back. <clears throat> up. Hey. Down, out, and cross. Open. 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 Down and release. Oops. Legs. Scoot back a little. Load. Push. Load. Down. Alternate. <clears throat> Foot and ankle. Point and flex. Dynamic separation of lower leg, foot, ankle, toes. Instead of this clung together foot that then is like we have cinder blocks for feet. Instead, we want this spacious quality. Go ahead, invert, evert, tilt, in, tilt, out. And then circle. So this disinhibiting, that's another term. So those two terms are really kind of interesting. Dynamic separation. Go ahead and reverse. And then disinhibiting. So it takes under an assumption that we have these inhibited, stuck places, and then we're disinhibiting, disinhibiting, so that the end result should be floaty, loose, light, limber. Other leg, pointing and flexing. So that each round done correctly is opening space. Releasing something that's there that need not be. Invert, evert, that little tilt, tilt. <clears throat> and then circle. Scoot a little bit forward on the chair. Let's dynamically separate where the legs meet the hip sockets and pelvis and low back. So this whole region, similar to when I talk about the shoulder blades, it's this sort of above diaphragm region. The whole section needs to be liberated. So it's really from navel, lower back, and below this whole chassis that gets affected positively when we do our spiral in, spiral out, right? It's not just the local place of hip socket uh, and leg bone. It's this whole section that ties around and sort of creates a little chassis. And we want that again, loose and free. And back to neutral, similar uh, hip hinge, fold, and then lift, 
and leave. And then let's add to this fold and leave that turn so that this opens middle back and shoulders. We really feel again that whole middle back area that tends to just be bound and gripped. Go ahead and sit back up and lean back. So we're looking at sort of this section, this section, this whole place that can be so sort of stuck and we're open. Coming back to neutral and then leaning back a little bit. So disinhibiting, creating a shape that induces some change at the relationships of the tissue and joints. And then that same movement, but with wider legs, gives us even more room to drop down into that space. And then sit upright. And lean back. So the dragon taking a bow. Lean. The dragon stirs the sea. We lean back and tip and bow to the right. And then stay forward as your elbows are out. Roll through, kind of bringing out the spirals of the shoulders. And then stay left as you lean back and around. And again, bow to the right. Elbows flare out. Sweep through, ringing out the shoulders. And then around. One more. Dragon stirring the seat with its tail and then reversing. So the prime mover is this pelvic leg relationship, but really it's this whole spinal column that when you allow it, the head is rolling, each vertebra is rolling on the one below it and above it. So there's this spiraling opportunity, which is just so important because we get deep entrenched muscle tension and rigidity rigidity that we need to polish out. Come back to neutral. Bring the arms alongside, uh, legs back to neutral, arms hanging. Sweep out, turn palms up, reach up, and let's get that extra reach right, extra reach left. That's again, to get another place where there's tension and plaque buildup inside of the shoulder blade, middle and upper back, that's only gettable by using the mechanism in the way that we're using it here, this upward rotation of the shoulder blade. And then we go both at the same time, reach, 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 reach. And wing. And then finally, that back bend. So again, we don't want to back bend. We want to go sort of like a forward and up arch. So the arms help with that. We go forward. Keep this reach through the fingertips as we go forward and up. And then start to create that rainbowing arch of the back. Satisfying. Swinging arms. It's just again to remind you that your arms won't fall off, and that there's an incredible functionality with the arms when you let them go. They can move freely, and then one forward, one back. Let this cause that little bit of a turning through your torso. All right, so let that little rotation happen. Again, that doesn't mean grab your body and turn it. 
that's that's the difficult part of Tai Chi practice is that we have to stop doing something. We have to relax, and then we find this functionality, this looseness, this freedom. And then settle. Fast feet, tap. Feel the empty quality in the feet, and then loose shoulders, everything loose, just fold and pour the body weight out of the chair, down to the earth. Come up really loose, and let's add to this now when we come up, go too far. Do hips forward, body arch just a bit, and just stay super loose. Then fold and sit all the way down to your chair. And do this a couple of times. You fold, sit, loose. Leaning back, feet are empty, and then we just pour the weight out of the chair, down to the earth, all the way up, and hips a little forward, so we create this sort of bowing quality here. Uh, just note that you can execute this movement, this pretty powerful movement, with like zero effort. So if you have anywhere in your body where you're tightening and holding and yanking and pushing, you got to just try to drop that and get this uh, just ease. And then now do this, but don't sit in the chair. So use this sink down, touching the toes or the floor even. And then push through the earth and rise and Hips forward, let the back arch. And then a hip hinge and sink. So again, unimpeded. That as we polish out these, these non-sung, non-supple places, the net result becomes this other power system another way of operating the body. And it is my experience with clients who have Parkinson's and uh, from some of what people are saying in this class is that you actually can do more in this state. And that's true for with Parkinson's or without, that as we learn how to use the liquid, fluid, pliable system, functionality goes up. It just increases. Pain goes down. Mobility, balance, all these things just improve. So now here we are standing, and let's do that opening qigong, where first, just get this feeling of, uh, you can tip into your toes a little bit, and you tip into your heels. Now notice, to tip into the heels, it isn't, remember we were just doing this thing. When we do this thing, our, our weight actually goes more into the toes. But to get the weight into the heels, we've got to come back from the belly, and so the head and shoulders are almost forward. And then when we go to the toes, we can actually create this line, this diagonal line. Heels. And then we've got our loose, floaty shoulders and arms. So add to this that your hands can levitate forward, but note, don't bring them up. Forward. Back. Now, back, stay back, open, and uh, just lift, relax, soft and easy, and then just sort of spill forward, sweep around, reach out. So it should feel like you get to this point, it's the end. This is the end of this. Any further forward, you'd fall, but you're right at that edge, and it's got nowhere to go but naturally spill back in the upper. Then settling to the middle of the feet, everything settles to that middle reservoir in the belly, sort of like a pooling moment here. And then that hollowing, which opens the room to just, yeah, and just melt all the way down through, and then push through the earth, vertical. We'll do this a couple more times. 
Rock open. Lift. Rock close. Yeah. Rock bring it in. Settling. And then hollow in. Just find the way through. There's this <clears throat> story they talk about of the butcher who never has to sharpen the knife because they find the spaces between when they're separating, when they're, you know, separating the, the animal. I know it's kind of a grotesque visual maybe, but the idea is that's kind of what we're doing with our movement. We're finding all these little spaces so that in a way, eventually, we're never running into ourselves. We're never bumping our knife into something and, and dulling the blade, but we're finding the way through. And the more you practice in this state, the more you can do in this state. Shogun or closing gesture, wing, roll, fold, settle down to your middle, hands cross, middle pivot, change your weight to your right leg, reach your right hand lower, left wrist comes up, left foot empty. Switch, switch, <laughs> the down allows for the freedom of movement. It's only when I really let this leg be bendable and open and I let all the weight go out of the body through there, that these all feel limber and therefore movable, right? But it has to be because you emphasize soft and then down to empty these out. And then we let it become the wheel. Forward wheel. Now I'm going to turn sideways so you can just see the path. This hand comes up like it's tickling the armpit and then extends all the way forward like an octopus tentacle and then stays long as it goes down and under and then up. And we're changing the weight to the leg of the arm that's on its way down. So we're over here. And again, I hope you are finding this because I know I have found this, this movement especially, I can get places up and in the shoulder blade and back if I allow for these little sort of leanings and tilting. Sometimes I turn my head, sometimes I lean a little more, sometimes less, where you just make these small micro adjustments where you can get at these barnacles, these stuck places. And again, you find that over time. Now reversing, so the high hand, like you're gonna tickle your own armpit and it goes down the backside as the other hand swings forward and up. So this one can be a little tricky. So what can help is back and forward, but not up. So notice how I went forward, but I didn't lift it yet. So now I still have room to go up here as this goes down. So it's down and up, back and forward, but forward is not up. So a lot of times when I do this, people immediately go here. 
So differentiate forward but not up so that there's still room to finish going up, back and forward, down and up, back and forward, down, up, back, forward. And then someday this just flows really nice. And it's just a natural sort of ring out some places. Changing weight, leg to leg. And then pause here with the hand high. Right alongside you, press with a flat palm down. As you press that hand down, the other hand, kind of like an empty side of a scale, floats up. And then this hand flattens as this hand releases, press, float. And the weight goes into, so this one's empty as this hand is high, and then I change the weight into that leg as you press down as this side empty, and then change. Now the high hand, turn palm up, it falls like a falling leaf as the other hand floats up. And the key to this one is a lot of times we get stuck down here. You got to finish, let that hand drop, and then it's ready when we come up for it to come up with the back of the hand facing in a little bit. And this palm is facing up. So we came up, rolls over, and they pass like this. And then the bottom hand has to relax completely as the top hand rolls over. And then we're ready to exchange. Top hand rolls over, bottom hand totally releases. And they pass. And then rolls over. Top hand rolls over, palm up. So that it falls with the back of the hand leading. And this one comes up. Relaxed as can be. Simultaneous. Simultaneous. And then let's go both hands down. Show. Hands cross. Rising hands. We go as if painting the wall in front. At the top, let the fingers float to the top as we get ready to float down. And back. Wow. Again. Forward and up. And at the top, there's that change on the way down. More. Low cradle right in front and crane. Embracing the moon, turn right palm up, it comes up and over as left hand sweeps under, bottom of ball, top of ball, hands come towards each other, away from each other, around the ball, to the wings, and then left palm turn up as it roll folds, right hand under, 
Magnets attract, repel, around. Add to this as you come together, a little bit of a sink, sinking, not really a squatting, right? We're not doing this, but there's just this sinking and then opening, straightening, around you go, and then again this sinking. So again, just getting our mechanisms, doing it the Tai Chi way. And then both hands down, scoop, come straight up in front of the chest, elbows, Pull back, turn palms forward, push, full extension, stay long, wrap around, and draw all the way back. So here, feel how this is open, right? All these spaces are open. Push, all these spaces close, and the back open. So feel that opportunity to really open your back by fully extending the arms without letting your body be pulled with it. So by keeping your torso where it is and extending, you're tenderizing all this mid-back, upper back tissue, full extend, and then draw and let it open in front. Push, full extend, stay long as you come around and then draw. So we want change, right? We don't want to be sort of frozen in the torso and going like this. That's not going to do what this does, where we finish to the end and then finish all the way back. This body needs to change shapes. Now, just your left hand. Push. Let this turn you. Now, turn left hand to face the body, right hand face ready to push, and then one draw, push. And then the hands reorient and draw, push. Hands reorient. Let this help you geolocate your middle pivot by being Grounded, relaxed, thorough. It shows you the turning place deep in the middle of the body, which is, again, it's a combination of different parts. It's a combination of the groin, combination of the lower back, combination of the belly, combination of the, the whole spine and shoulders. But that combination is this turning freedom of movement that we're looking for. And then both hands back, down, relax. Now from your middle pivot, change your weight to your right leg, turn, sweep the hands across to this side, and just hold that shape for a moment. So we've shifted, we've turned, and <clears throat> turn your left hand, getting ready for brush knee, right hand ready, and just feel that bit of dynamic tension, elasticity, right? You come over this way and there's this, this sort of loading, storing quality, and then we want to issue the movement just shifting, turning, brush knee, sweep leg. And then it stays at this kind of direction of creating elasticity, turn the hands around, and then we come on through. Let the flow keep going that way, dynamic tension, and then brush and sweep. Brush and sweep. As the dynamic separation, which was the term I was talking about at the beginning of class, as that separation process happens, Buoyancy fills in that space. So then naturally that sweeping hand finds it enjoyable to swirl the stream. Comes around and back in. Around. 
So this whole bear series, when done correctly, really takes our back and opens it, broadens it like a big old bear. So letting that all the way to the fingertips. All the way. The bear swats the low jumping fish. So we take that buoyancy and we just allow for a little bit of lift in space. But we always remember to take that lifted hand and return it to release down. Other one lift. Brush. Sweep. And just ah, open, spacious, light, loose. Using that looseness as our means of executing movement. Let's go middle jumping fish. Chest height or so. Everyone's on the bus and we and a little higher jumping fish, maybe throat or face or head. So Miguel, you are now doing almost uh, the you're doing the cloud hands instead of the swat the fish. So bring your left hand down. Yeah. So remember, it's this bear, yeah, that's it. The bear paw smacking, open palm, smack, and then go highest jumping fish. So we get this whole opening and then allow for a little bit of a sinking. So this one, we start to feel this rising up as we reach for that highest point and then allow for that sinking. Again, which is different than squatting it's just sinking. And then there's this rise. And this settling. Sink. One more. Now, brush knee and push. Left hand dips down, right arm wing. Roll, fold. Everyone's on the bus. Shift and turn and brush and push. Now, the left arm has to wing. As the right hand is dropping down, roll, fold. Everyone's on the bus and shifting, turning, brushing, pushing, flow through. Let it go all the way to the end, and yet you kept your ground, your middle, but that elasticity, that dynamic tension, dynamic separation then returns, and it's loaded, and then it's issuing. And returns back to a stored position, and then it's we allow it to release and empty. We return to a store, and then from store to issue. Let it clear out, return to store, and one more. So Debbie, left hand down. Yeah, there you go. And then it's shift and turn, brush and push. Now, stay here for a moment. Your right foot should be emptier. Bring it a little behind, toes turned out. And then shift 100% into that back leg. <clears throat> and sort of sit into it a little bit. Don't hammer the knee, but also don't stand in a locked leg. Just have that Tai Chi leg. Your right hand down, left toes out in front, touching the ground, just gently, right? Empty. And then bend this elbow. So this is that golden rooster standing on one leg. Right? Now bring the left foot back, nothing changes. So you bring it back and touch heels together. The feet are basically mirror images of each other, but there's no weight. Then as you change the weight, Left hand down, bend right elbow, point fingers up, and right foot empty. Just touch like a little dragonfly landing on a pond. Very light. Bring the uh, right foot back, no body weight, so it's empty. Then we chain. As that left foot is actually empty, then you just let it float out. Bring left foot back, nothing changes. Change everything, transforming 
shape, option. Lift a little. Bring the foot back. Change. So a good way to do this is sequence it to where you go, okay, toe float out. If you can do that, then you think, again, a soft and empty leg. It's a little full, right? And then bring the foot back, no body weight, so that from the middle pivot, we orchestrate this transform. So if you can do the toe, you can do this. If you can do this, you might even be able to do the full lift, but it's got to be loose. It's got to be light. Put the foot down, no weight. Change. Either toe, small lift, or full. Put down no body weight. That's often harder than the lift, is the putting down with no weight. How's the teacup on your head? Right? There has to be this stability, but it's not stability found by tensing. It's only found when we drop it all out. And then there's this, this, this chun, this sort of heaviness, sunken heaviness. And feet parallel, cloud, your right hand a cloud, left hand dipped into the water, shift and turn, cloud lake. The lake vapors up as the cloud rains down. Your left foot should be empty. There's that bit of dynamic tension, right? We're shifted, we're turned, we're here. And then we go leg shift, turn from belly, cloud, <clears throat> lake. And the hands stay over here as they go through their exchange. So we keep that bit of dynamic tension. And then it's shift, turn. Rain and vape. And shift and turn. Cloud, lake. <clears throat> Vapor. Couple more. Let's add. Your left foot should be empty. As you vapor and rain, bring that left foot in, back out. Shift. As the hands change, we come in, out, cloud, lake. As you vapor and rain, in. Loose, long, spacious, billowy, open. And wash your palms. Now bring the weight into your right leg, scoop left hand down by left hip, be turned slightly. Take your left hand forward out in front of you and slicing at an upward diagonal as you shift and turn. So it ends up at the front corner of your telephone booth. So that means we're not trying to go behind the body. We're ending up sort of up in front. Turn the palm out, wing, Sweep leg, low cradle, flying diagonal. So it's going both forward and slicing up. And the palm is facing up. So it isn't back of hand. It is tiger's mouth, ridge side hand. Turn, sweep, leg, 
ridge side of pan leading to that point. Turn. Sweet. Let's switch hands. So come across, bring your right hand down by left hip. Go forward and flying right hand. Palm turns out, flows right into a wing, flows right into the sweet leg, right into the bottom of the ball, flying diagonal. Remember, not back of hand leading, Karen. Keep your palm facing up. And so it isn't this, it is palm up, leading, 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 which has a totally different effect mechanically to the shoulder. And it allows this spiral out there to be more valuable. One more. <clears throat> Left hand bottom in front, right hand top. Two train tracks, opposite direction, parallel to each other. So they don't cross. One doesn't come up, one doesn't go down. So we're getting that passing by quality. Two train tracks, turn them on a slight diagonal. So now that bottom hand is doing that flying diagonal, top hand is doing the opposite. They separate this way, come back across to a holding ball, and again, now hold the ball, shift and turn to your right. Stroking wild horse's mane as you shift and turn. So flying diagonal plus down and away. Karen, move that right hand. Yeah. So they got to move with each other. Now turn palm out, palm up. Embrace the moon back to the start. And then it's flying diagonal plus down and away, plus shift, plus turn. Ah, reaches that sort of satisfying position and then turn both palms and ah, kind of makes its way back around. <clears throat> Again, shifting, turning. Ah, Around the bend. One more. Stroking wild horses, me. And around the bend. We're not shortening to get back. Now, wash your paws. Wash. And then bring right hand under, left hand over two train tracks first parallel to floor, just to calibrate that relationship. Diagonal, calibrate that relationship. One more like that. Stroking wild horse's mane, shift into left leg, turn left, and we shift, turn while stroking wild horse's mane. Turn right palm out, left palm up. Embrace the moon as you shift and turn left. And then shift, turn. Stroking wild horses mane. Turn right palm out, left palm up. One up, one down. One under, one over. Shifting and turning. So we're a wind up toy. Wound up left. And then we shift and turn, unwinding to the right while executing. Again, remember, it's both hands at the same time, Debbie. It's both this and this at the same time, 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 time. All the way. And then it's turn and turn, and it's both hands. Returning to this embrace the moon. And then it's both hands. So the brain tends to get stuck, right? The top hand doesn't do anything and we move. So we're trying to go slow enough that our brain has time to go, okay, you move and you move and shift and turn and get a 
around the bend and shift and turn. Gather. And then shift and turn. <clears throat> One more. And now we do the stroke wild horse's mane, get all the way to this finished shape, and then sweep left hand as right hand turns over and turn a little more to the right, kind of winding up just a little more to then issue. And then this is sort of like releasing, we're sort of letting go of what we were in, so we're not stuck anymore, we're letting go of it. And then we're stored, right? So I've been talking for the last few classes about that three-part deal. So now we're stored. From being stored, we can issue. From having finished the issue, we have to let go and melt into the store position. Right hand on top, folded over top there, carrying a little more. Looks like you're here. I can't tell. Gotta be here. Okay, yeah. And then issuing, issuing, issuing. Issuing comes to an end, like a wave coming up on the shore. Kind of finishes. And then there's this softening as we return, 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 loading up to then go. And that softening at the end that melts its way, returning to a stored shape. And then and melt, store. And then from here, just lower with the sweep. With the sweep. Sweep. Settle. And then sink chi wash organs three more times, rocking back, opening, lifting, and then forward, sweeping, reach. And then there's nowhere else for it to go, but like again, a wave reaching its crest, it just starts to return, settles to the middle. Flows all the way. Remember, this is to clear out the eddies, the little swirling loops that could be stuck from our practice. So we're combing out, clearing out, dredging out, flushing out the plumbing, the chi plumbing with this final movement. That's why we start with it and why we end with it. that as we become regular practitioners, our default setting starts to become more this setting, this sung, soft, pliable, empty, liberated, released, dilated, yielded, dissolved. Relax. We want our brain, nervous system, tissue, endocrine glands. You go down the list, the whole cascade sequence effect. We want that to just be all perfectly synchronized. And then we wing, roll fold. And remember to go all the way to a zero. Again, so we get caught in the doing part of our life all the time and even have a tough time sleeping. I mean, that's one of the number one challenges for all of humanity is actually getting rest. So here, as we seal the practice, hands stack over the belly. If balance permits you, you can close your eyes. See if you can consciously taste what they call wuji, zero, no activity, total void. 
And the idea is that this void is not something to be feared, but rather it's got resource. It's got inexhaustible resource for us to soak in, to plug into. So that's why napping can feel so good when we just, we just zonk out for a bit. Just another five breaths. The sacred stillness, the sacred emptiness. And thank you so much, everybody. We close with this little hand mudra. Fold, wrap, creates a little yin-yang looking symbol. Thank you. Have a seat. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute or any insights.